MEOS has been my favorite custom firmware for the other RG35XX models. And now we have the update that works the best for the SP model. It lets you close the lid for sleep and shut down after a few minutes and there's a few other benefits as well. It's also so much snappier, they did a lot of work on this. I've been using the test builds on my SP for a while now, and I'm super happy that it's come public and available to everybody. Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today I'm going to walk you through installing and setting up the best custom firmware that you can use on your Ambernic RG35XX SP and that's MUOS. Now, I already did a video like this for the other 35XX models, so a lot of this is going to be a rehash for the SP, and I'm just going to skip the showcase of the firmware and just get right into the guide. If you want to see a showcase first, check the first video to get an idea of what this all looks like and what it does, and then I'll leave that in the description. Okay, so setup time. First thing you're going to need is a branded SD card. This guide is only going to focus on a single SD card setup, as that's currently the best way to use this firmware in my opinion, especially with how you have to scrape box art currently. It's kind of a mess if you use two cards. You'll be fine with a 128GB SD card, but feel free to go to 256GB maximum if you want extra breathing space, but honestly I've been using a 128 without issue. I would also keep the original SD cards that you're using now, or that came with your SP, just off to the side, in case you ever want to go back to stock operating system. You're also going to need a branded SD card reader. All of this is in my description if you need recommendations. But the number one reason why firmware doesn't work for people is a bad SD card or bad SD card reader, so avoid that now. Let's head to the MUOS website and we're going to download the latest release. Click download it from our release build page and then just download the zip file. Once it's downloaded, unzip it and you should see an image file inside of the unzip folder. Now we want to use a program called Rufus to flash this to our SD card. Head to the Rufus website and grab the portable option. Open Rufus and make sure the device is your SD card, it usually just matches the size. Click select on the right and navigate to the image file that we extracted and select it. Then just click start. It's going to take some time so just let it run. Once it's done, safely eject and pop the SD card into the device in slot TF1. Turn on the device and you're going to be greeted with a screen that asks you to select your model. So go ahead and select SP. Then select your time zone, and now enter your time and then it would be B to save and exit this time, not A, just in case that trips you up. Let it do its install and it's going to be a while. Once you see the home screen, you know it's done, and you can scroll down to shut down and let shut down for now. Eject the SD card and put it into your PC. From now on, you're likely to get errors in Windows when inserting the card. Drive not found, drive needs to be repaired, and a whole bunch of other stuff. You can just ignore them all. Never format this card, don't allow Windows to do any of that or change anything, or it's just going to erase things and cause problems. So, open the MUS drive and you should see it in my computer. If not, open disk management in Windows and head to the drive, then give the very large XFAT partition a drive letter. So you can see it in Windows now. When you open the drive, you're going to see a few folders, and one of them is called ROMs. It's great because it's empty, and there's no set folder structure. All you need to do is have some folders in here and then games inside of them. And they could just be the system names as the ROM folders or whatever you want to do. But personally, I'm going to make it very easy for you. I'm going to connect my stock OS ROM card on the right, and then I'm just going to go into the ROMs folder, and I'm going to copy and paste all of the ROM folders over to the MUOS ROMs folder. Honestly, it really can't get easier than that. That is the simplest way for you to do things. Now, if you don't have the ability to connect two SD cards at the same time, you can just back up all of those folders onto your PC one by one, and then move them over to the MUOS folder afterwards. Head into the MUOS folder and now into BIOS. 
this is where you would put your BIOS files. Let's do the exact same thing again, and I'm going to grab all of this from the stock card. Head to the BIOS folder on the stock SD card, and just copy and paste all of them onto the MEOS card. Don't skip this, or a lot of your disk-based systems won't load. You need BIOS files for them. Especially PlayStation 1, but there's a lot of others too. Now, I do want to be clear about something. I don't suggest using the stock ROMs. The BIOS files are fine, but the ROMs are definitely not. You're going to run into a lot of issues, especially with saving in Pokemon and just a whole host of other problems. So, my suggestion is follow the video and transfer everything over, but I would suggest that you replace the ROMs as you go. And now that you know where they all are and how to get to them, it should be an easy process to just replace ROMs as you go along, because otherwise you're going to run into a lot of issues with things not saving and other problems, and you might as well just do that now, so keep that in mind. Now one question you might have is what about all of our save files? And we're going to do that later, there's some extra steps needed first. But don't worry, we'll be bringing them over from the stock SD card into MEOS, so you can keep all your saves and continue on. Now, I didn't put it in this guide, but in my other video, I go over how you can add box art and all of that to MEOS. It's a very lengthy process, but the steps are all the exact same for this device. So, if you want box art, just go follow that video, and I'll put the timestamp in the description so you can easily jump over there. Once all your ROMs have transferred, eject the SD card and put it into your device in slot TF1. Let's do a quick tour of everything here and where to find it. First, you're going to notice that the brightness is probably not great, and so the hotkey is the menu button plus volume buttons to raise or lower the brightness. From the home screen, explore content is where you go to play games, and you'll see a lot of the folders that we added whatever you named for each system, and inside of that are all of the games for that system. So you should see your artwork too if you did that. Now if you boot into a game, you can exit currently with menu plus start, or the menu button and X to get into the RetroArch menu, and then close content. Head to configuration and this is where all your settings live. Let's head into general settings. On this page, you can change some things, for device startup, there's two good options. Last game will always boot into the last game you played, and resume game will only boot into the last game you played if you let the device sleep and shut down while playing it. It's personal preference here, but I want resume game. Sleep shutdown is the timer for how long the device will sleep before completely shutting down. So you close the lid, it sleeps for X minutes, and then it shuts down or you can just disable this. This is an actually awesome feature, and personally I set this to 10 minutes. That way, since the device loses about 4% battery per hour in sleep, if you have this enabled, after 10 minutes it shuts down and it saves that battery. And with how quick MEOS boots up, you don't have to worry about it taking too long, so this is a perfect setting to enable. If you head to interface options, I would enable the network icon so you can see it in the top right when connected. That's all I've personally changed here, so let's back out. Here in Theme Picker, you can change to any of the themes that the firmware ships with. You can also find more themes on the MEOS Discord in the themes forum. There is a Pokemon one that I want to use called Kanto OS, or Kanto and then an S at the end. It's cheeky. So I found the theme in the Discord, and I clicked the GitHub link. The directions say to put the zip file in the MEOS themes folder, and the PNG file in the MEOS themes preview folder. So just click each file, then on the right, download raw file, then put them both in the right spots on the SD card. On the device, head into configuration, theme picker, and select the theme to use it. Pokemon on a clamshell device, I never thought I would see the day. After Theme Picker, we have Wi-Fi Network where you can connect to Wi-Fi. Just push X to scan for Wi-Fi networks, select yours, enter your password, and then connect and you're all set. Back out and in Web Services, you have some options here for advanced users to sync saves, or you can access this device remotely in a web browser to easily just put ROMs or anything you want on it. 
Personally, I've been using SyncThing to connect all of my saves that I've been using Folder Sync for on Android. And it's been working great. So now I have saves synced across Linux and Android devices. And it is an awesome feature on this firmware. To access the device remotely, all you have to do is put the IP address in a web browser on your local network. And you're gonna see a pop-up that shows up with an MUS logo. And then just put the MUOS username and password. And it is literally just MUOS. And suddenly you have access to your entire device, all of the folders and anything you need to do. Let's jump into RetroArch now, and we can head to Applications, then RetroArch. First thing I want to do is enable Retro Achievements, of course. So head to Settings, Achievements, and then Enable it. Then you can enter your username and password. Now let's head to Input, Hotkeys, and let's fix some hotkeys. The Menu button is one button for one of our hotkeys, so let's set up the rest. I want Fast Forward Toggle set to R2, so let's fix that. I don't want slow motion, so if I use Y, I can remove it. For load state, I want to use L1, and for save state, I want to use R1. For show FPS, I want to use A. So for all of these, it would be the menu button plus that button to do the hotkey in a game. If we head to saving, we can turn on auto save state and auto load state. Auto save state automatically saves the state when you exit the game, and auto load state automatically loads it when you load the game. Also, if you set boot up to load last game or resume game like I have it, it's going to boot right into your save state when you turn on the device of the last game that you were in. Pretty handy. Now let's head all the way back to the main RetroArch menu, configuration file, and save current configuration. Don't forget this step, it saves everything we just did. A lot of the systems come with overlays and shaders applied out of the box. The overlays aren't necessary, but the shaders are. The shaders are actually doing some heavy lifting, fixing the frame pacing of the device. And if you turn them off, you're going to have frame issues. So just keep it on. Thankfully, the shaders are actually non-intrusive. It doesn't even look like there's a shader applied. But for the overlays, let me show you how to remove them. You're going to have to repeat these steps for each system, but thankfully you only need to open a single game per system. And so let's just do Game Boy here. Push Menu and X button to open the RetroArch menu, scroll down to On-Screen Overlay and turn it off. Then head to Overrides and save Core Overrides. There you go, overlays removed for that core for that system. Repeat this for each core and each system as you go along. Another change that you might want is colors for Game Boy games, or color correction to look like the original Game Boy Advance for Game Boy Advance games. So open a Game Boy or Game Boy Advance game, and then open the RetroArch menu using Menu plus X, Scroll to Core Options and then change GB Colorization to Auto for Game Boy. For Game Boy Advance, this only works if you're using the MGBA Rumble Core, which I would suggest using anyway and we're going to talk about in a second, but it's the same steps except it's called Color Correction and you can change it to Auto. Now you might run into a scenario like I did, where you went to boot up a Nintendo 64 game or something else and it wouldn't boot. Or maybe you want to choose the specific core or emulator you want to use for a specific system. So like I mentioned, you want to use MGBA Rumble for Game Boy Advance games. Or maybe you want super fast fast forwarding, so you're going to use GPSP for Game Boy Advance. In the games list for the system, push select and you're going to see a bunch of systems. Navigate to the system folder for whatever system that you're in. So if you were in Game Boy Advance, you would go to Game Boy Advance. And you can now see that there's some cores to choose from. Once you select a core, it's going to change it for every game in that list. However, you might be asking, what if you just want to change it for a single game? So what you can do is the same steps. Set them all to a core, then just favorite the game or games that you want to keep that specific core selection for. Then you can change the core back for the rest of the games to use. 
any games that you favorite will keep the same core chosen when favorited. So it's a bit of a workaround to do it until we get per game core associations. Okay, so the last thing here, and that is moving the saves over from the stock SD card. Without booting up a game, the saves folder will be empty on MUOS, but as you play games, the save folder creates folder names for each core. So naturally, if you boot up some games, those folders will start to show. I would personally suggest doing this for any cores or systems that you want to move saves over to. So for example, I have some Game Boy saves, and so I booted up a Game Boy game on MUOS, and you don't even have to play it, just exit it right away. And now I can easily transfer my old saves over from stock OS. So the steps to do all of that once you've made some saves to create folders is head to the MUOS SD card, MUOS folder, save, and file folder. The state folder is for states, but for simplicity, you should transfer in-game saves over instead. States are notoriously difficult to transfer, especially for new users, so I would suggest making all of your in-game saves on the stock operating system SD card before transferring everything over, just so you can ensure everything is up to date. You should now see core folders in the file folder, so pick the one you want, and for Game Boy, it would be Gambate. Now, on the stock OS SD card, you would go to the saves underscore RA folder, ROMs, GB or GBC since they both use Gambate, then the Gambate folder, and copy all of those saves over to the MUOS side. Since we used all the same ROMs, the ROM names are all the same, so the saves are too. Steps are the same for all of the other cores, basically, as long as they're in RetroArch. And honestly, that is about it. Should have helped you as a complete setup guide from top to bottom. But if you run into issues, the MUOS Discord is your best bet, and that's going to be in the description. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on my Discord to chat about retro handheld stuff. Support me on Patreon if you like my videos. And hope you all have a good one.